Okay, today we are looking at the MSI R9-290X Battlefield 4 edition from AMD. Though I should add, there's not actually any other Battlefield 4 things apart from a game code. On the back of the box there's some information about MSI Afterburner and their solid capacitor design from MSI. Okay, let's get this box opened up. I'll tell you some of the specs while I am doing that. It has four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory running at 5000 megahertz, which is actually quite slow, but it is on a 512 bit bus, which will be very good for multi screen configurations. It's got a core clock of 1000 megahertz, which is pretty good as well. So it's got all the, it's got all the usual driver CDs connectors and there's the Battlefield 4 code, etc. Okay, let's look at the GPU itself. See, it's got a single fan here. This case doesn't feel particularly well made. It does have a very cheap plasticky feel to it. But again, this is just a reference design, so maybe we can forgive it that. On the back, there is a very, it's a very nice black PCB. This card, I should add, is 276 millimeters long. So that, which isn't too bad, it should fit in most cases. There is a, it takes a six pin power and an eight pin power connector. And across the top here, there is a little tiny switch. I don't think you can see it to switch between the, the uh, Uber mode and quiet mode. In quiet mode, it limits the fan speed. So it runs quieter, though sort of quieter because this is quite a loud card anyway. And in Uber mode, it lifts it so the fan can go a lot faster and get a lot louder and help cool it a lot more. All the tests I am doing are going to be in Uber mode because, to be honest, anybody paying this much for a card like this is not going to have it in quiet mode. They're just not. Hello. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the MSI R9 290X reference card design. Here it is here. Now, the first thing before I show you the benchmarks that I want to tell you about this. This fan here is completely inadequate. And I mean completely inadequate. Uh, this card overall is very, very good. And especially if you're going to use this in multi-monitor displays with like playing an iFinity or something like that, then this, this really will like kill all the others. But in single, on a single monitor, even at 1440p, it really doesn't show its true colors. And its problem is, that when it's when it's loaded it gets hot and i mean really hot. we're talking 95 degrees here and that's that's really hot isn't it it's haswell hot you know and this thing here it just can't it can't keep it cool and it gets to 95 and then it starts to throttle and then that brings it down and down and down and down and and that's why that's my explanation as to why in the benchmarks this this didn't fare well. I really would like to see it with a custom cooler on it, uh, the Windforce one, the DirectCU2, anything like that. Something that's definitely going to keep it cool because I think once it's like that, it'll even kill everything in single monitor configurations as well. Anyway, I've been testing it against a few things. I haven't got all of them here. I've got a couple of GTX 760s, it's an EVGA ACX. This is very nice. And bizarrely, I've got a Zotac Amped Edition one, which is much different. And of course, I have got the 280X right here, which is also huge. So they're, they're actually exactly the same size. I think about 276 off the top of my head. That might not be right. Something like that. But anyway, back to this card. I'll go through the looks closer in the other video. But this plastic shroud... This doesn't feel good. For the price you're paying for this, this does not feel good at all. This feels really horrible and really cheap. And even if you take this off and look underneath, there's not really much to look at. As far as connectivity is concerned, you've got two DVI-D ports here. You've got a display port here and you have an HDMI port here. Now, you can use any of these to run iFinity. It doesn't have to be only display port, etc, etc. A few other things I'd like to say about this. It has true audio support. So that's a spe it's a special kind of thing for the developers. 
when they make a game, if they include support for that, it'll work with that. Uh, and the same for Mantle, which I'm sure you know about. It has to be supported by the developers, so it means we've got a card here that has this great new technology in it, and it doesn't actually work with anything yet. I mean, even Mantle isn't released until next month, or at the time of this video, next month. So, at the moment, its its best features are kind of kind of held back a little bit. And like I say, it does run far too hot, and it does affect the performance. As far as the clocks are concerned. The core clock is at 1000 megahertz, which isn't so bad, but the memory is at 5000 5, megahertz, which, let's face it, that's low. That's very low. This thing here, this is at 7000. So, and I know it's got less, less memory, it's got less of a bus on it, but still, this one and this one easily came up to that amount. The Sapphire went up to 6400. Yeah, I've taken this one to about 5.5, and, and any of any further above that and you're getting glitches all over the place and you have to bring it down again so yeah I should mention that all the benchmarks that I'm doing are done in conjunction with a i7 4770k at 4.4 gigahertz I'm using 16 gigabytes of 2133 megahertz RAM okay so let's have a look at the benchmarks <laughs> So there you go, now you've seen the benchmarks, it doesn't perform all that great in single monitor games like this. I really would like to test it with more with Infinity because I really think that's where it's going to show its true colours. But at the moment this cooler here is completely inadequate, it, get, it reaches 95 degrees, it throttles the clock down so it doesn't get any hotter. I, would, I wouldn't say it spoils your game but it does reduce its performance to more of a level of well, it's always worse than these two. And the two, the 280X, I think, actually is better with a custom cooler like that. With the VaporX cooler, it actually works better than this one as the, as the reference design. Overall, I would actually recommend going for the 290 if you really do want something like this. Because that's got a sl It's only got... Oh, I don't know the exact amount. It's got slightly less amounts of stream processors in it so there's less to cool with the same cooler so that is slightly more effective it does cool it a little bit more obviously it does suffer from the same problem but not to the same degree as this one once this has got a proper cooler on it it will be much better and yes I'm snapping the card again because I really dislike this shroud it's not good I don't like it so let's talk about the power consumption of this thing now I don't actually have really any way of accurately measuring this, but it, it's a lot. It's a lot, okay. Especially if you're overclocking this, it, it, it's a lot. <laughs> um, I mean, the two seven sixties probably took about the same amount of power. This is it get it can get up to anything, up to about six hundred and fifty watts, which uh, for a 
freaking graphics card. 650 watts. I mean, they recommend a 750, so obviously they think it can go even higher, or they're just playing it safe. But I remember someone on my last on the last video for to ATX said they were using a 500 watt power supply for it, and and it was working, which is fine. Don't try that with this. It, that that's not going. It's not going to happen. Trust me. You'll end up paying 400 pounds or so for absolutely no reason at all. Bad things will happen. For less than all of these, you can get one of these. This is the old snap. This is the 280X that I reviewed before. Had a lot of views on that. Thank you very much, guys. I would recommend one of these. If you're using single monitor gaming, I would recommend one of these over one of these or two of these. Pretty much there's not going to be anything that you can throw at this that it's not going to be able to do. So there we go. That is my conclusion and my recommendation. Which is kind of strange. I know. I know there's going to be some people who are going to be like, hmm, about the 290X. But if you're running single monitor, then this is the card to go for. Or you could go for a 780. But that's more expensive. Okay, one last thing before I finish. I'd like to do a kind of little competition thing. Not really a competition, but you know what I mean. The first person in the comments below that can tell me what this is exactly. If you know which card this is, you t let me know in the comments. And the first person to get it right, I will shout out in my next GPU video which will be probably the SLI video of these two. See? I'll, do a, I'll cut to a few close-ups in a second, let you have a good look. See if you can tell me what this card is. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.